Okay. Couple of years down the road, you are leaving a doctor's appointment. Great. You had a uh just, you know, a routine thing, you know. You're getting sure. older, so you just wanted to make sure some things were still, you know, looking okay. Yeah. And so um this is a uh, a cardiologist. Uh so he's a, a cardiologist, but he's also a strong man. Like he competes in like strength competitions and stuff, you know? Yeah. And it's he also like live streams uh his uh workouts because he just lifts so many weights that people are like there's always like a crowd of people there to watch him. And it got so bad, like that like the gym owners were complaining. And so he's like, all right, look, here's a compromise. I'll live stream my workouts on my Instagram. And that way we're not taking up too much room in the gym itself. So, Why the fuck do I care <laughs> about what this guy's habits are outside of being my cardiologist? It's just an interesting God you know, damn. fact about him. My cardiologist is also a strong man. Yeah. Um, and like he dresses like a normal doctor, but it's evident that he's like a big fucking dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he he actually has to use like large pens because so like what do you his, mean hand, he has large, his, his hands, hands are, are so, so big, big that he special orders uh pens from uh this company overseas. They operate in uh China and it's a company called that's a lot of pens because they make a lot of different types of pens and, and the company is called that's a lot of pens that's a lot of pens yeah and so that um, sucks. so uh the pens are like very large you know and um what do you when, when you say they're very large like what do you mean by that i mean they're not like as big as like a fucking you know uh gigantic pole or something but they're they're noticeably larger pens where it was so length and girth yeah okay think about your normal average everyday law of abiding like pen yeah it's like a drumstick of a pen yeah lengthwise yeah well how about how about the thickness of it can you describe the thickness of it of the pen yeah so yeah, it's yeah. it's a very thick it's actually uh it's without a doubt the thickest type of plastic ever seen on a pen thickest pen on the market the thickest pen on the market do they have a, a name for it for like the type of pen it is like the the, the large yeah like what's it called so if somebody like calls that's a lot of pens and they say hey i want a case of yeah um, it's called, uh, the Ubermensch. Okay. <laughs> the Ubermensch pen is what it's called. Yeah. And, and so this is a long, a long, thick pen, a long girthy pen. Yes. And okay. so this guy, this, uh, your cardiologist, his name is, uh, Dr. Pummel. Dr. Pummel as in like to beat someone. He's like, um. He's giving you the the results, you know, of everything. He's like, you know, Aaron, um, your heart uh, is pretty dang strong. Yeah, dude, I've been it's, working on it. He's like, it, he's like, it shows. It's it's pretty strong. And I know a little something about strength. And he, I don't, um, need, I don't need to, I don't need to see him flex. I don't need to see him bust out of a fucking lab coat. I don't need to see any of that. His uh, the coat jacket like rips open. And he goes, oh. God damn it. He takes it off, puts on a new one. He has like several waiting because this happens a lot. Just and buy so, a bigger coat. <laughs> buy a bigger coat. Dr. Pummel's like, anyway. So, yeah, the old the old ticker is ticking right along, my man. It's a Great. quarter till fun in there. That's what time it is in that ticker. It's the worst fucking doctor. And so you're. <laughs> So you get up to leave and he's like, um, there is one thing I need to discuss with you real quick. What? He goes, um, 
So it's actually nothing bad. Um, we were doing, you know, our, our, our regular heart tests and what have you. And yeah. um, the boys in the lab noticed something that your heart, it's kind of hard to explain. I'll, I'll just put it in layman's terms to you, essentially. Oh, thank you. He goes, they did a study, basically, and it turns out that Aaron... And like his eyes shine when he says this, he goes, you're pure of heart. Great. What the fuck does that mean? Medically speaking. He what goes, the fuck does that even mean? For he's, me, he's like, he's like, you know, they, they, they did a, uh, a scan and your heart just operates on again in layman's terms. It's kind of hard to explain on a very pure level, Aaron. But that, what does that mean? There's no correlation to, this supposed purity of heart with like how, how I should live my life. What the fuck does it even mean? He gets a phone call. He's like, one second. He's like, hello. You're my fucking doctor. He's like, whoa, what are you wearing? A specialist even. So you leave. You're like, whatever. No, I'm not going to leave <laughs> until I get a fucking answer. I he, say, what the fuck does this mean? <clears throat> Your heart. He gives you like a, a printout of the analysis and like, I'm not a goddamn doctor. Yeah. He, I, he set up a fucking appointment for this. Like this, he needs to tell me. That's what doctors do. So he gives you like a very technical explanation and he's like satisfied. And you're like, you just, no, it all goes no. over your head, but you don't want to look dumb. So you're like, uh, yeah, do, this is my fucking heart. He's talking about what but he's it, saying. What it's is good. the deal? You know, if it's yeah, a thing, what does that mean? So it's a thing where if, it was something bad, you know, he'd tell you more about it. You know what I mean? But it's a good thing. He, like, like you don't understand this is not it. A real, this is not a real test. What the fuck kind of test? What are they testing for? And they discovered this anomaly that I'm pure of heart. They're like so pure of heart. It shows up on a fucking test. It show Yeah. So you're like, huh? So you leave and uh, you're walking, fuck? you're walking home and you kind of like stop at a um, crosswalk or whatever, and you kind of have a lot of the uh, concerns that you're raising right now. You're like, what did that even mean? Uh, how did that guy get so strong? Uh, I don't really understand this. And then you kind of like suddenly like look over to your left and on your shoulder, there's landed like a, uh, like a majestic, like just beautiful, like dove. And it looks at you and it goes fucking dove. And it goes, hello, Aaron. And then just like flies away. And you start seeing like, you know, as you're walking, you're seeing like children smile at you. You know what I mean? Um, several doves land on you. There's like even more doves, you know, none of them talk though. And you just feel like you're always in like the sunlight. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're feeling pretty good. There's a pep to that, to that fucking step. Because, um, so things financially have been going pretty okay for you, man. So you're happy that this heart thing wasn't that big of a deal because you're like, you kind of had this thought that like, oh, once I start becoming successful financially, like something bad is, I'm going to die. Something bad is going to happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. So you have this like weird kind of <clears throat> paranoid thing. Um, and so um, it pro it stems from when you were uh, when you were a kid. Um, you were like walking home, you know, from like school or whatever, and um, you found a uh, hundred dollars on the ground, like a hundred dollar bill. Yeah. And you were like, "Holy shit!" And like you picked it up and looked at it, and like you kind of turn it over to make sure that it's real. And uh, as you're doing it, just some random kid comes up and like kicks you in the balls as hard as they can. And you were right. like, and then like the money went like flying away. It landed in a, um, yeah. it was run over by a lawnmower. Yeah. Yeah. They it ran was, over my hundred dollar bill that you found. Yeah. It was um, whisked away by the wind to a certain death. And so you've always kind of had this thing of like, oh, if I get financially good, then something bad is going to happen. And you're so far, 
things, nothing really that bad has happened, you know? Yeah. Um, so what happened is you are, uh, you're getting paid to help uh, Michael Kane learn how to do stand-up comedy. The Michael Kane. The actor. Yeah. You're getting paid by um, the the Michael Kane. Yeah. You're getting paid by um uh Lanalax, uh the TV and movie division. Um yeah. yeah, they're they're making uh this movie about an old man who did comedy when he was like young, but then like he had a family and he kind of, you know, all that stuff came first and he had to stop doing it. And now he's an old man and everyone in his family's dead. Oh, all, Jesus. And so now it's like, now it's the time for me to, to do comedy again, you know? And so, um, no, a lot of guys like that, maybe yeah. not with a dead family, but like a lot of guys start significantly later in life. Yeah. His fan in the, in the movie, um, his uh his family they were all traveling on separate planes and they all crashed together oh, like Jesus into Christ. each other how many planes are we talking four four planes collide at the same spot in the sky yeah his Jesus plane did though his, his plane was like normal he actually got upgraded the first class so he was like he was like the character's like this is the best day of my life you know but then you know <laughs> so um that's awful pat four planes at once yeah and so um so you meet with michael kane in person like a bunch of times and you kind of talk to him because he's because like you meet him and he's like hello aaron i'm michael kane Oh, this is the voice you were telling me about. What do you, you mean? Before the show, you talked about you were <laughs> unveiling a new voice tonight. And now you were working on it. It's Michael Kane. This is the new voice on the show. Why Michael Kane, Aaron? I <laughs> don't know that much about stand-up comedy. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> that's where you come in. And I got to be honest with you, Aaron. Michael Caine is hopeless when it comes to stand-up comedy. Like, it's actually... Um, it's taking you, it, them a lot longer than they thought it was going to take. So, yeah. like, production is, like, being held up and stuff. Oh because his thing is, like, he's not going to start the movie until he goes up there and fucking kills. And after that, that's how he knows he's ready to, to to film this role, you know? But he just keeps eating shit. His other thing is that he's like, oh, I don't want people to laugh just because it's me, my yeah. kind. And so he signs up as uh, Mike, <laughs> Michael Bain is his stage name. <laughs> and... Uh, his disguise that he wears is like a, like a arrow through his head, you know? Yeah. And like an eye that patch. That sucks. Oh. But it's so, it's so clearly him, you know? He goes up there, he's like, why did that chicken cross the bloody road? Why, Michael Caine? To get to the other side. I'm sorry, Michael, Michael Bain? <laughs> And so Michael, so Michael Bain is not particularly good. And so you, and like, it doesn't matter what jokes you write for him. He's always going to fuck it up. He's always going to do it as Michael Caine, you know? So you wrote this one, you had this one bit that you used to do um, that you don't do anymore. Uh, it's a bit um, about how, like how often you farted growing up. And so um, you give it to him to to do live one night and he just, it just doesn't work. And like, you guys are flying around. Like you go to like the Midwest, you go to the East coast, West coast, the sucks. upper North West. And Michael Caine eats shit at 
all of these clubs. So it's taken a while. So he goes up there. He's like, am I even like trying to help him? Yeah, you're really it, trying. It sounds like yeah. I'm just writing jokes for him instead of like talking to him about being a stand up comic. So that's also part of it is that like you you feel like he understands like the character, like as far as his motivations, what got him into comedy. Uh, you know, you guys go over, you know, comedic theory and stuff like that with with him where you, you talk about the rule of threes, you know? Yeah. And you're like, you know, a lot of times it's like this. I but but da da I da 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 and he's like right, right. And um you talk you you're like, you know, people always say the rule of threes. I prefer the rule of twos. It catches people off guard. And he's like, smashing, brilliant. He's like writing it down. You're like, um This sucks. Why? I think it's cool. I think it'd be really cool to to teach Michael Caine how to do stand-up comedy. I'm watching Michael Caine just bomb all over the United States, apparently. <laughs> but you're getting paid well. Yeah, but I'm also supposed to be teaching him how to be a comedian, and I'm not doing my job. <laughs> so you got like I a... Will, I will not be be paid for this for much longer. You get... um, You do like a video call with the, uh, the producer um, of the film, this guy named... Uh, his name is Mr. Cool. And Mr. Cool has like really long, like trans, yeah. like it's so, his hair is so blonde and so fine that like you feel like you can see through it. You feel like there's almost nothing. You feel like it's a veil that barely covers the next dimension, you know? And when the sun hits it, it like you I can see know. like constellations in his hair. He's all, makes he's, no goddamn sense. He's like uh, like eight feet tall. Of, of course. He's like, he's like, Aaron, what's going on? And you're like, look, dude, like, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm 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 working with them. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You like fax over a bunch of uh, routines that you wrote for them and stuff. You see, you've been sending video of you like you guys record, you know, your lessons and stuff. And so they're like, yeah, I mean, we, we don't really know what, you know, what to do here. And so they're like, Aaron. We really believe in him for this role. So he's like, look, if you need to take some more time, take some more time. And then you hear like coming from the stage, Mike, Michael Caine as Michael Bain going. Um, he's doing impressions and um, he's like. I'm Michael Bain. Do you want. Are you talking to me? You talking to me? That's Robert De Niro with a hearing aid. That would that would crush in so many places. Yeah, so um that's the first time that like he ever gets like an actual laugh, and you're kind of like, Did you hear that? And Mr. Cool is like Keep it up, Sensei. And like, you know, it's end oh, or whatever. Gross. Yeah, you Sensei. You, yeah. So you kind of pitched yourself to um no, Pat, the production. I'm not pitching myself as, as a fucking sensei. You're like in the meeting with them, the yeah, like you, you said, like, look, and you know, I've I've been around for a while and I've never really had a, a protege, but you know, I feel like I could really be a, you know, a sensei to this guy. And for some reason that just struck a chord with Mr. Cool. And he was like, you are the guy, the guy for this. Sucks. So the money, sensei. The, the money is coming in. So you go home, you're like, you know, another evening of uh, watching, you know, Michael Bain. Uh, at least he finally got that, you know, that one laugh or whatever. Um, so you're like, all right, there's, you know, there's something, I guess. You close the door. As soon as you close the door of your apartment, there's a knock on the door. They're like, night mail. Dunk. They walk away. Great. You're like, hell yes. And you open the door and there's like a package there. And it says to... My last surviving heir. God damn it. 
aka a- aka Aaron Brooks. Who? Would you open the package? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> so you open up the package and it's from uh a lawyer. Um, his name is Jackson Renegade, the attorney who fucks. And in the letter, he outlines that basically you had a, a, a very distant relative who died. And um, they're only the, the, the he had to do. He's like, yeah, it actually it's taken us like a year to find you. Uh, we had to like do a lot of like really intense research uh, to figure it out. Um, but, you know, but we did it. And she wanted to leave her final, her name is um, Rose. Yeah. So Rose uh, wanted to leave you her final, like her last possession, her only possession. What's that? It's a, uh, it's a nightlight. Okay. It's a nightlight, but it's it looks like um like like a small mini stained glass window type of type of deal. Okay. So you're like all right, like whatever. And so you kind of go about your evening, you know. Um you watch TV, you know. Uh you watch an episode of Chunks before uh going to bed. Uh as you walk uh down your hallway to your room you've never noticed like quite how like long and narrow and dark that hallway can be so you're kind of like i've never noticed it it's never crossed my mind well yeah you've just never really cuz you're and then so you're like huh this is weird and so you kind of look over and you're like oh right the strange nightlight. You plug it into that fucking wall. And How serendipitous. And for, for just a second, when you plug it in, like you feel a like a like a a, a a not unpleasant sensation of heat on your palm. You look at it, the um the nightlight is like glowing, you know, and it's all the different. It's fucking beautiful. You know, there's a it's got like it's got the whole rainbow rainbow rainbow. And when you look at the rainbow colors that Roy G. Biv coming at you, you think to yourself. I'm a rainboy. Oh, yeah. So. You're kind of like transfixed for like a few moments and then you're just like, you kind of like shake it off and you're like, whatever, uh, you go to sleep. Uh, you dream of a howling void. Right. And then you suddenly in the middle of the night, you kind of like wake up and you're like, what you ever have that thing where you wake up, something wakes you up, but you don't know what yeah. the hell it was, you know? Yeah. And you're like, what, what, you don't know if it was a sound or someone grabbed you. You don't know. So for yeah. a few seconds, you just kind of like lie there in the dark, you know, panting those fucking sheets just soaked with sweat. Oh, gross. Luckily, you're wearing sweat resistant uh, pajama bottoms. I'm wearing pajama bottoms in that hot ass bed. But they're specifically designed to be sweat resistant and keep you cool throughout the evening. So you're wearing, uh, right. you're wearing, and you kind of stop for a second. You're like, wait, what? What's going on? And then you hear it from the hallway. Aaron. Nope. Aaron. No, I don't like this. Hey, Aaron. Um, do you, do you have a second? I'm getting up and I'm turning the lights on. So you get up, you turn on the lights, and in the hallway, you can see that nightlight. 
except like it looks a little different. Yeah. Now, instead of it being just like a different kaleidoscope of like colors or whatever, uh, standing perfectly upright is like this gigantic black sword. What the fuck, Matt? And you go, what? And yeah. You, you... Well, because, you know, you're still kind of asleep and uh, you walk out into uh, your hallway and you see that that shining black blade on the wall. It's hanging on my wall. Yeah. In place of the uh, nightlight. A nightlight is very different than a huge black sword. So you're like, looking at yeah. There, one is one is huge. The other one is a fucking nightlight. What do you yeah. mean it's hanging where the nightlight was? So the nightlight is like um, kind of towards the the ground or whatever. Yeah, but it's gone now. There's just a floating black blade, and you look at it for a second. Do you touch it? No, I don't fucking touch it. So I go, what the fuck is going on? I just scream that into my empty house. <laughs> And then a voice from behind you goes, I'll tell you, Aaron. God damn it. You turn around and um, standing there is this uh, guy. He's wearing like a uh, like a wizard's robe. You know. Uh, it's got like a like the faces of like eagles all over it. Yeah. He's holding in his hand fucking cheesesteak sandwich. Yeah. And he talks to you. And when he speaks to you, you notice that this man has, without a doubt, the worst Philadelphia accent that you have ever heard in your life. It sounds like a parody of a Philadelphian accent. You know, he goes, all right, that Aaron, sucks. he goes, all right, God Aaron, damn it. I'm the wizard of Philadelphia. And he goes, and only the pure of heart can lift the Vorpal blade. This is a Vorpal blade we're talking. Yeah, he goes on to explain that. Um, God damn. What am I going to do with a Vorpal blade? So what happens is um, if you're pure of heart, uh, the, the Vorpal Blade appears to everyone else as a nightlight. However, when someone who's pure of heart owns it and, like, handles it, it turns into the Vorpal Blade. And he goes, all right, well, maybe we'll get some hoagies after this, but um, are you going to grab it, Aaron? And again, his accent is just inexcusable. We're talking about a Vorpal Blade in the Dungeons and Dragons sense. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh I'm not I'm not I don't need I'm I, I don't I don't need a sword. I don't have enemies. People like being around me. Yeah. In fact, I don't have any enemies. I'm not gonna touch this fucking sword. Also, get out of my fucking house. <laughs> you just showed up here in my goddamn kitchen or whatever. Get the fuck out of here. I walk to the front door, I open it, and I motion for him. I will get out of my house. He's like, all right, Aaron. Sorry about that. He goes, he goes, all right, well, smell you later. He leaves. Jesus Christ. So he leaves, and you're like, that was fucking weird. Uh, so what do you do? Do you, do you ever try to lift the blade, or you just try to go to sleep, or what do you do? I mean, I'm not touching that fucking sword. Yeah. You know, I'm not touching it. I don't want anything to do with a Vorpal sword. So you kind of like just look at it and you. um, You just pick this up. It's going to cut my fucking head off. <laughs> it's going to cut my fucking head off. I know it. Yeah. And so um, you're like, well, I'm not going to deal with this. And so you just grab like a really, really. uh, Like heavy blanket, you know. And you walk over and you just kind of like throw it over it so you can't see it, you know? It's that big that I have to like throw it up 
Yeah. Yeah, the Vorpal Sword. It's like a cool. six-foot yeah. sword or something. Mm-hmm. Holy and, shit. And so yeah. um, you throw it over, and like it's so sharp that like when you throw the blanket over, it just gets cut in half. So you're like, all right, whatever. And so um, you walk back to your room to finally get some fucking shut eye. Good. Um, you walk past, you kind of like look at it for a second and you're just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do with this. Yeah. And then um, you uh, turn and like walk back. You start to walk back to your room, but then you fart really, really loudly. Come on. <laughs> And it shakes like the wall slightly. Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> the vorpal sword like comes fuck off. You. And falls and you kind of go, huh? And look up. And you God look up damn. just as the blade falls and just chops your fucking head off. God damn it. Are you fucking kidding me? A fart shook this sword from its mount and it yeah. cut my fucking head off. And your head just kind of like lays there on the ground looking at like the sword dripping with, you know, your own blood or whatever. And then That's you hear right. that, vo- that that voice again go, that voice was calling to you earlier go, That's gotta hurt! Fuck you. <laughs> your head got chopped off by the vorpal blade. Yeah, yeah, of course it did. <laughs> you could have harnessed his power and become, you know, magic or whatever but instead you farted oh i'm sure yeah fuck you <laughs>